nose and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Cherie here with you on another wonderful Sunday. How are you doing? How are you feeling good in your own body? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> awesome. In fact, I've been thinking a lot about what it means to be in a body. Um, sometimes when I talk with God and, and I listen and I learn things about him, I'll draw. And so today's drawing is about a body. You know, we are a part of the body of Christ. And as believers, we're a part of his body. But what does that really mean? And what does it mean to know that it's not just you who's in the body of Christ, but other believers? And how should we engage with them? And how should we engage with any person? What does all that mean and what does it look like? So that's what I've been thinking about a lot today. And I drew a whole picture to help me think it through. Like the body of Christ. Does Christ have head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose? I'm not sure, but you know who can tell us? Connect HQ because they have a message for you. Let's listen closely and go ahead and get a marker, get a pen, a paper, and draw along with me as we learn about the body of Christ. Are you ready? No, are you really, really, really ready? Super duper ready. You are. So am I. Okay, let's get ready to learn about the body of Christ and how to treat others. Ready, set, let's learn. Yay! Mm. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Did you make the salsa yourself, Captain? Uh, well, of course. I only use the freshest of ingredients for my appreciation nachos. You know, I've always wanted to make my own salsa, but what ingredients do you use? Ah, uh, well, there's tomatoes, red onions, garlic, cilantro, hold jalapenos. On, hold on. Red tomatoes, onions. No wonder it's so good. Uh, oh, lime okay. and salt. Okay, won't forget that. Thank you so much for your recipe. I hope whenever I make my salsa, it's just as good as yours. You take such good care of us. There's my resignation letter. I quit. Uh... Who was that? We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Ray, and this is how we learn to be better neighbors. Hey, was that Nate I just saw? <laughs> Nate, that's his name. He is a great guy. Hard worker, loves nachos. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask him to go to lunch, but I just haven't gotten around to it, I guess. Who is he? He works with a good news group. Yeah, but he didn't uh, deliver good news today. My... I like bad news, I'm oh, sorry. Wait, wait, uh, what happened? Nate quit. Uh-oh. Why, uh-oh? Nate handled community relations for the Good News Group, and if we had a neighbor that had questions or complaints, he'd be the one to help them. Who would complain about Connect HQ? Well, we can't always make everyone happy, Dot, but whenever we do find someone that's unhappy, we have to do our best to try and help them. At least that's what Nate used to say. But if he's not here to help our neighbors... We might be in trouble. A few complaints have already come in. Mike. Yeah? One of our neighbors got a bunch of our mail, and Nate was upstairs sorting it. Do you think you could take over sorting? I'm absolutely on it. Tony, Dot, do you guys think you can get over to the hub and take care of any complaints that come in? Sure thing. All right, I'll try to find Nate and see if I can convince him to stay. Okay. There you are, Nate. I've been looking everywhere for you. What are you doing in the Whatnots room? The Whatnots are always borrowing my pens. Did you need something before I leave, Captain? 
Nate, is there anything I can do to convince you to say? If you're unhappy about something, just let me know and I'll try to fix it, uh, no matter how big or small. Oh, I will personally put your favorite snacks in the vending machine. Do you even know what my favorite snack is? Uh, nachos. You're gonna put nachos in a vending machine? Oh, will it convince you to stay? No, that's not what I need. Well, what do you need? My green sunglasses. Have you seen them anywhere? I can't find them. Nate, please reconsider. We really need you. I'm sorry, Captain. <sighs> this is going to take a while. Complaints. They're just so, so... Ridiculous. Exactly! Mm -hmm. This person thinks our building is too tall. She wants us to demolish the top five floors so she can have a better view of the sunrise. Well, this person thinks that our building makes the street too windy, and she wants us to put up, like, wind guards or something like that. I don't know. Look! Three new complaints. We haven't even finished answering these! Uh, this task does seem impossible. Why do we have to deal with these complaints? Connect HQ is supposed to help kids, not whiny neighbors. Well, actually, um, here. This is one of Nate's favorite stories, and I think we need to see it right now. This is the story! is alive. Jesus told a story about a Jewish man who lived in Jerusalem. One day, the man decided to visit his friends in Jericho. He set out on his journey, enjoying the beautiful sunshine. What a great day for a long walk. But on his journey, two robbers appeared from out of nowhere. Somebody help! The robbers took the man's stuff and beat him up. They left him laying beside the road, nearly dead. Soon, a priest came along on the road. This seemed like good news since priests were known to be close to God and good helpers. Please, help me. But the priest saw the wounded man and he pretended he didn't. Instead, he crossed to the other side of the road and kept walking. Next, a man who worked in the temple walked by. This seemed like good news. If this guy worked in the temple, he must be close to God and willing to help. Please, help me. But the temple assistant pretended not to see the man dying beside the road. He crossed to the other side of the road and kept walking. Next, a Samaritan came along. The Jewish man didn't expect him to stop. Everyone thought Samaritans weren't very nice or helpful. But the most unexpected thing happened. The Samaritan stopped. He got into the ditch with the Jewish man and bandaged his wounds. Thank you for stopping to help. The Samaritan loaded the hurt man onto his donkey and took him to an inn. He paid for the Jewish man's room and asked for them to take care of him. Do you think it's better to look like someone who helps others or to actually be someone who helps others? Jesus asks us to be someone who helps just like the Good Samaritan. So, if the Samaritan was that man's neighbor, that means... Everyone is our neighbor. Which means we should love everyone? Yeah, that's a part of being the church. We should love others as God loves them. 
and that means we should do everything we can to help them. Including dealing with these complaints. In a very loving way. Dot, Tony, I need help. Speaking of helping others. <laughs> What's going on, Mike? I need rubber bands, guys, and post-it notes, and anything to keep this mail straight. You go ahead, Tony. I'll take care of loving our neighbors. Good. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it. Hey, Captain Ray, did you find Nate? I did, but I couldn't change his mind. Oh, man, that's a tough break. It's taken three of us to do the job that he did by himself. I, I can't believe all the work that he did all alone. I know, and I, I offered to help him if he was unhappy. I even told him that I would put his favorite snacks in the vending machine. Oh, well, we already have red licorice in the vending machines. Red licorice? That's his favorite? Mm-hmm. He's pretty passionate about it, too. Almost as passionate as he is about nachos. Oh, well, it doesn't matter anyway. He said he didn't need that stuff. So what do you think he needs? I don't know. That's what I've been trying to figure out. I think that maybe I wasn't caring for him the way I should have been caring for him. What do you mean? Well, I mean that I really didn't know anything about him. I didn't know that nachos or red licorice were his favorite. <laughs> At first, I didn't even know his name. I mean, if I would have cared for him, I would have known more about him. I would have treated him differently. Well, maybe if you show Nate that you cared about him, maybe he'll change his mind about leaving. Maybe, but I don't even know where to start. Well, you know, it actually reminds me of a verse in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 10, verse 27. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, here, say it with me like this. Luke 10, 27. Luke 10, 27. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart. All your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. All your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And love your neighbor as yourself. You see, whenever we say love your neighbor as yourself, what we're saying is you have to love others as you want to be loved. So if you were in Nate's shoes, how would you want to be cared for? Um, I guess I would want to be noticed. And if I needed help, I would want others to help me. And if I did something good, I would want them to let me know that I did a good job. I guess I would just want to be treated like a friend. I think that is a great place to start with Nate. Thanks, Tony. I'm going to try to go and find Nate. <laughs> Are you okay? I tried calling you. Dot, stand here. Make sure the mail doesn't go anywhere. Where are you going? I'm going to go talk with our next door neighbor. He shouldn't have waited so long to tell us that he was getting our mail. No one should have to sort through all of this. Listen, Mike, I know it isn't always easy dealing with our neighbor, but Don't we really- Don't try to stop me. I'm not going to let you go. We need to love our neighbor. How are you so strong? I don't know. What's going on in here? Nate! Nate, please talk some sense into him. No, I'm going next door, and I'm going to give up my piece of my mind. You know, I've had to deal with this neighbor before, Mike. Really? How did you put up with him? Our neighbor's restaurant is really struggling. In fact, he's got a lot on his plate. I don't think that dealing with our mail is exactly on the top of his priority list. You were loving our neighbor. That's my job. In fact, it's a job we all share. We're all called to be good neighbors. And good neighbors care, share, and they're always there. Good neighbors care, share, and they're always there. Maybe I should find a way to help our neighbor. Now you've got the right idea. Wow. That is a lot of mail. 
Um, Mike, here's the here's the stuff that you needed. Oh, thank goodness. Hey, uh, have any of you guys seen a pair of green sunglasses lying around? Oh, I think Captain Ray found those. Uh, she's upstairs. Oh, great, thank you. Hey, Nate, um, would you like to go to lunch with us sometime next week? Ooh, yes! I like this plan. We can go to the restaurant next door! Uh, sure. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks for thinking of me. No problem. I'll help you sort through this, Mike. Hey, and I will too. And whenever we're done, we'll go uh, handle the other complaints. Thanks, guys. That's, that's a lot of help. Oh, Nate, there you are. Um, I wanted to make sure that you didn't leave without those. Thanks, Captain. I guess now that I have these, I'm good to go. Nate, I owe you an apology. So, I know you've been working here for a while, and I haven't really made much of an effort to get to know you. I should have encouraged you and helped you, and treated you like a friend. But I didn't. Well, that's kind of you to say. And I want you to know, in the future, it's okay to speak up. I know it's hard for us to let others know that we're struggling, but if you do, good neighbors will be there to help you. That's a really good point. I'm used to being the neighbor who helps everybody, but I'm not used to being the neighbor who needs help. <laughs> well, it looks like we both have ways we can grow. <laughs> Look, I know I quit in a blaze of glory earlier, but I really do like working at Connect HQ. And I think that if I stayed, that we could really help each other grow. If that's okay with you, of course. <laughs> Nate, nothing would make me happier. Hi there, I'm Captain Ray. And today we learned a verse from the book of Luke. Say it with me like this. Luke 10:27. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. These are the most important commands that Jesus gave us, and it's what being the church is all about. In the story of the Good Samaritan, the priest and the Levite choose to ignore a man in need of help. They weren't good neighbors. Good neighbors go out of their way to love others, even if they're different from us like the Samaritan did. What does loving your neighbor look like? Loving your neighbor means loving them like you would want to be loved. That might mean helping your neighbor, or being patient with them, or inviting them to eat with you. There are so many ways we can love our neighbor. Every day, God gives us the opportunity to love our neighbors. So look for those opportunities. Good neighbors care, share, and they're always there. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Nate should be here any minute. He's going to be so excited when he sees these. We've been talking about loving our neighbors, which is one of the best ways we can follow Jesus. If you haven't made the decision to follow Jesus with your whole life, you can make that choice today. All you have to remember are the A, B, C's. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that choice today? If so, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave. Wow. Wow, wasn't that so amazing? Hearing about the body of Christ, our neighbor, caring for others, brother and sister in Christ. There is so much that we gained from today's message. Did you pay attention, very close attention? You did. What about that memory verse? Are you locking it in? Yes. Yes, memorize it and then tell other people about it because that's how we grow. And that's how we share the message of God. That's so cool. And you know what? It's so amazing to hear that the two most important things we could ever do is love God and love others. 
And that's how we grow in the body of Christ. Now, you've heard me say a lot about being brothers and sisters in Christ, being a part of the body of Christ, and even being a believer. But if you've never said the prayer of salvation, or if you've never asked God to come into your heart, well, this is a perfect time to do it so that you can be a part of the body of Christ. So if you're like, Miss Cherie, I want to be a part of the body of Christ. I want to say that prayer. Then let's do it together, okay? Are you ready? Great. It's going to be just like the ABCs at the end of the Connect HQ video. All right, here we go. Close your eyes, bow your head, and repeat after me. Dear God, Lord, I admit that I have done some things wrong. Please forgive me and please come into my heart. I forgive those who've done wrong to me. God, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and that you are our God. And Lord, please come into my heart. And God, I choose to follow you every day of my life and tell people about you. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that prayer, you are a part of the household of faith. You and I are brothers and sisters in Christ, and we can live a lifetime in the joy and in the wonders of God. Are you excited about that? Because I am. This is so great. So continue to tell people about God and to share all the good news and be excited to be in the body of Christ. I will see you next time. Have a great week, boys and girls. Bye.